Hi, Sue. Thank you for joining me today for the Bible reading. It is the one for August 8th. And I'm reading Isaiah 49 to 53 from the World English Bible. And I have already read you the introductory paragraph to Isaiah in the King James Version, the Modern English Version, and the Complete Jewish. Now I have one more for you for this book. I think four is enough. But this one does add a little bit of added information. And yeah, it's about four paragraphs, I think. So it says, the name Isaiah means salvation of Jehovah. The very heart of the message is the salvation that God intends for his people. This theme permeates the entire book. The name Isaiah means salvation of the Lord, or the Lord is salvation. So I like how it kind of switches it both ways there, that the salvation of the Lord or the Lord is salvation, because I, I assume that's common with with interpretation, but I have a son named Samuel, and his name means heard of the Lord or heard of God, and also God hears. You can read it both ways. And also I have a daughter, Abigail, and it means the father of joy, or I think it means the father, father of joy or the joy of the father. Either way, you get a little bit different perspective when you read it back and forth that way. So here in this introduction, it says, Isaiah wrote the longest prophetic book in the Bible, and is considered the prince of the prophets because of his rich vocabulary and poetic skills. He is believed to have written the prophecies from 740 to 680 BC, which indicates that his ministry spanned a period of about 60 years. Isaiah lived in Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, during a time of spiritual and political chaos and turmoil. He lived during the time of the prophets Hosea, Amos, and Micah. I can't wait to get to those. Um, I love those those minor prophets. Now, you probably can find them. We're going to be reading them soon, but you probably can find them on my channel from when I read through the Holman Christian Standard Bible. I think they're still up for that. So here it says, Isaiah came from an influential upper-class family. Some Jewish traditions even believe that Isaiah was a cousin to a King Hezekiah. His ministry included the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Isaiah is the preeminent Old Testament writer regarding redemption in the life of Christ. The style of writing in the book of Isaiah is among the finest literature of the Hebrew writings. No wonder I like Isaiah so much. I really, really like um, Isaiah in the New Living Translation. So read through that sometime. I, like, I really like reading all the different translations, but I love the poetry in the New Living. So it says... Um, among the finest literature of Hebrew writings, it is often compared to the best of ancient or modern poetry. There is far greater use of metaphor and simile in the book of Isaiah than any other canonical book. No wonder I love it. The book of Isaiah contains four songs regarding the suffering servant of Jehovah. In chapters 42 to 53, Isaiah offers several glimpses of Christ, his titles, characteristics, the ministry of Christ, prophecies concerning the life of Christ, portraits of salvation, and the everlasting nature of God. In a simplistic approach to an outline, the book of Isaiah can be divided into three major sections. The early, pro uh, yeah, the early prophecies regarding the kingdom of Judah, a recapitulation of history concerning Assyria and Hezekiah's brush with death, and the later prophecies of Isaiah. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah record a series of predictions of the coming destruction of Judah, in the final 27 chapters, which is interesting, it's split that way because, you know, the Bible split that way, 39 and 27. And so they talk about how, I should say, we talk about how um, Isaiah has that similar layout as the entire Bible. Uh, hang on, I lost my place. So the final 27 chapters, a shift occurs as the prophet predicts a healing and restoration of Israel climaxing with a new creation of heaven and earth and the eternal kingdom of the Lord. Scum scholars argue that the entire book of Isaiah could not have been written by one person because the transition between the first 39 and the last 27 chapters is so significant and because of differences in the writing style between the two. They believe at least three people authored the book of Isaiah according to three distinct divisions. Proto Isaiah 1 through 39, Deutero Isaiah 40 to 45, and Trito Isaiah 56 to 57. However, 
bear with me here. However, the book includes 66 chapters, but no title has been given to the last nine chapters. Some scholars believe these three persons penned these divisions sometime after the Babylonian captivity, a time spanning between the 8th century BC uh, So multiple authors after the Babylonian captivity. The differences in style and content do not necessarily indicate multiple authors, but an inspired prophetic record covering events from that time and bringing the reader into the internal kingdom. Isaiah is named as an author and is mentioned 16 times from chapter 1 to 39. Notice the four kings of Judah under which Isaiah served, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Isaiah 49, verse 1. Listen, islands, to me. Listen, you peoples from afar. Yahweh has called me from the womb. From the inside of my mother, he has mentioned my name. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. He has made me a polished shaft. He has kept me close in his quiver. He has said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength in vain for nothing. Yet surely the justice due to me is with Yahweh and my reward with God. Now Yahweh, he who formed me from the womb to be his student, servant, says to bring Jacob again to him and to gather Israel to him. For I am honorable in Yahweh's eyes and my God has become my strength. Indeed, he says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the nations that you may be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, says to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and rise up, princes, and they shall worship. Because of Yahweh who is faithful, even the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Yahweh says, I have answered you in an acceptable time. I have helped you in a day of salvation. I will preserve you and give you for a covenant of the people to raise up the land, to make them inherit the desolate heritage. Saying to those who are bound, come out. To those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the paths, and their pasture shall be on all treeless heights. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall heat nor sun strike them. For he who has mercy on them will lead them. He will guide them by springs of water. I will make all my mountains a road, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from afar, and behold, these from the north and from the west. And these from the land of Sinim, or Sinim, sing heavens and be joyful earth. Break out into singing mountains. For Yahweh has comforted his people, and we will have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, Yahweh has forsaken me, and the Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. I love that. That's how I feel about my children. I'm going to go back and read this. It's talking about God's love for Zion. But verse 15, it says, Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your children hurry, your destroyers, and those who devastated you will leave you. Lift up your eyes all around and see. All these gather themselves together and come to you. As I live, says Yahweh, you shall surely clothe yourself with them with them all as with an ornament and dress yourself with them like a bride. For as for, that's funny, for as for your waste and your desolate places and your land that has been destroyed, surely now that land will too will be too small for the inhabitants and those who swallowed you up will be far away. The children of your bereavement will say in your ears, this place is too small for me. Give me a place to live in. Then you will say in your heart, who has conceived these for me since I have been bereaved of my children and am alone in exile and wandering back and forth? Who has brought these up? Behold, I was left alone. Where were these? The Lord Yahweh says, behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and lift up my banner to the peoples. 
They will bring your sons in their bosom, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am Yahweh, and those who wait for me shall not be disappointed. Wow. Shall the plunder be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captives be delivered? But Yahweh says, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the plunder retrieved from the fierce. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with sweet wine. Then all flesh shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Chapter 50. Yahweh says, Where is the bill of your mother's divorce with which you have put her away? Or to which of my creditors have I sold you? Behold, you were sold for your iniquities, and your mother was put away for your transgressions. Why, when I came, was there no one? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that I can't redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness. I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord Yahweh has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I might know how to sustain with words him who is weary. He awakens morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord Yahweh has opened my ear. I was not rebellious. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who plucked off the hair. I didn't hide my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord Yahweh will help me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I won't be disappointed. He who justifies me is near. Who will bring charges against me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord Yahweh will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? Behold, they will all grow old like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears Yahweh and obeys the voice of his servant? He who walks in darkness and has no light. Let him trust in Yahweh's name and rely on his God. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who adorn yourselves with torches around yourselves, walk in the flame of your fire and among the torches that you have kindled. You will have this from my hand. You will lie down in sorrow. Chapter 51. Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek Yahweh. Look to the rock you were cut from and to the quarry you were dug from. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For when he was but one, I called him. I blessed him and made him many. For Yahweh has comforted Zion. He has comforted all her waste places. He has made her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness will be found in them. Thanksgiving in the voice of melody. Listen to me, my people, and hear me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will establish my justice for a light to all the peoples. To that peoples. My righteousness is near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The islands will wait for me, and they will trust my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment. Its inhabitants will die in the same way, but my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be abolished. I love that. The heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment. Verse 7. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. That's us. If we're born again, we're giving our life to the Lord. He said he would write his commandments on our heart, right? So it says, you who know righteousness, the people who's in whose heart is my law, don't fear the reproach of men and don't be dismayed at their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever and my salvation to all generations. <clears throat> that includes us. Awake, awake, put on strength, arm of Yahweh. Awake as in the days of old, the generations of ancient times. Isn't it you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the monster? Isn't it you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? Those ransomed by Yahweh will return and come with singing to Zion. Everlasting joy shall be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. 
Does that sound familiar to anyone, that song? I'll see if I can link it in the description. Let me read it again. Those ransomed by Yahweh will return and come with singing to Zion. Everlasting joy shall be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and sighing will flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who shall die, and the son of man who will be made as grass? Have you forgotten Yahweh, your maker, who stretches out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth? Do you live in fear continually all day because of the fury of the oppressor when he prepares to destroy? Where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile will speedily be freed. He will not die and go down to the pit. His bread won't fail. For I am Yahweh your God who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. Yahweh of armies is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and have covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and tell Zion you are my people. I love that. I've put words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand. Verse 17, awake, awake, stand up, Jerusalem, you who have drunk from Yahweh's hand the cup of his wrath. You have drunk in the bowl of the cup of staggering and drained it. There is no one to guide her among all the sons whom she has given birth, and there is no one who takes her by the hand among all the sons whom she has brought up. Oh, my goodness, what a heartbreaking picture that is. There is no one to guide her. I just have to read it again. There is no one to guide her among all the sons to whom she has given birth and no one who takes her by the hand among all the sons whom she has brought up. These two things have happened to you. Who will grieve with you? Desolation and destruction and famine and the sore. How can I comfort you? The reason that gets my attention, I I, um, I want to have a prayer, a Zoom prayer meeting with anyone who has um, is estranged from their children. And that's that population right there. That's part of it. Anyway, I realize that's talking about something slightly different, but it's still, it's depicting a mother who is, uh, doesn't have her children with her when she's older. Verse 19, these two things have happened to you who will grieve with you. Desolation and destruction and famine and the sword. How can I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of the streets like an antelope in a net. They are full of Yahweh's wrath. They rebuke of your God, the rebuke of your God. Therefore, now hear this, you afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. The Lord Yahweh, your God, who pleads the cause of his people, says, Behold, I have taken out of your hand the cup of staggering, even the bowl of the cup of my wrath. You will not drink it anymore. I will put it into the hand of those who afflict you, who have said to your soul, Bow down that we may walk over you. And you have laid your back as the ground, like a street to those who walk over. Now I want to say something. Uh, well, I'll say something at the end about that. That prayer, Zoom prayer call. Uh, something on my mind to say about it. Chapter 52. Awake, awake, put on your strength, Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem. The holy city, for from now on, the uncircumcised and the unclean will no more come into you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit up, Jerusalem. Release yourself from the bonds of your neck, captive daughter of Zion. For Yahweh says you were sold for nothing and you will be redeemed without money. For the Lord Yahweh says, my people went down at the first into Egypt to live there, and the Assyrian has oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore, what do I do here, says Yahweh, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them mock, says Yahweh, and my name is blasphemed continually all day long. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful in the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen lift up their voice, together they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when Yahweh returns to Zion. Break out into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for Yahweh has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Yahweh has made his holy arm bare in the eyes of all the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing. Go out from among her. Cleanse yourselves who carry Yahweh's vessels. For you shall not go out in haste, neither shall you go out by flight. For Yahweh will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Behold, my servant will deal wisely. He will be exalted and lifted up and will be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, his appearance was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. 
So he will cleanse many nations. Kings will shut their mouths at him, for they will see that which had not been told them, and they will understand that which they had not heard. 53, last chapter. Who has believed our message? To whom has Yahweh's arm been revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant and as a root, uh, as a root out of dry ground. He has no good looks or majesty. When we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with disease. He was despised as one from whom men hide their face and we didn't recognize him. Surely he has borne our sickness and carried our suffering, yet we considered him plagued, struck by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought our peace was on him, and by his wounds we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, yet when he was afflicted, he didn't open his mouth. As a lamb that is led to the slaughter and a sheep that is before us shearers is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. He was taken away by oppression and judgment. As for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living and stricken for the disobedience of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He has caused him to suffer. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and Yahweh's pleasure will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light and be satisfied. My righteous servant will justify many by the knowledge of himself, and he will bear their iniquities. Praise God. I love that. Therefore, I will give him a portion with the great. He will divide the plunder with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was counted with the transgressors that yet he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Well, that's the end of today's reading. Um, that prayer Zoom call that I mentioned, um, I have a couple going right now, but I want to, well, let me just say, there's an email in the description. So if you're interested in getting involved or you know anybody that uh, wants to have a prayer call specifically for parental alienation, parents that are want to pray for their children and have some support from other parents that are in a similar situation, please, again, use that email that's in the description or there's also a mail, a mail address there if you'd like to use that. And um, when you do, if you email me at that email address, we can talk further and I can tell you more about it. Hey, thanks for joining me. Shalom. See you tomorrow.